Hey, Hurdy. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another vlog with me. You may have noticed that uh, I just said good afternoon rather than good morning. And that's because it is half past two. And you've probably already guessed by the title of the video, I'm going wild camping. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day today. Forecast is pretty good. Might be some thunderstorms later on, I don't know. We'll have to see, but it's supposed to be fairly clear. And uh, I'm just gonna head up high onto a summit that I'm very familiar with, but never actually camped up there. And I've never gone up there with camping eyes, so to speak. I've never looked for any you know, potential uh, sites to pitch my tent, so I can't, just can't remember what it's like. Uh, on the way up, I'm gonna fill up my water bottles. So I've got a little bit of water in my bladder here, but I've got two one litre bottles in, the, in my bag. I'm gonna fill them up for making food later on and brews and what have you. So uh, let's go, let's get up there. Can you guess where we are? It's pretty clear, isn't it? Oi, I'm behind you. Hi. Well, you know what this is. Yeah. A very, very popular camp spot. Some guys camping down there already. But I'm not going there. I'm going up and beyond. Let's go. Okay, it's time to fill up my water bottles. I've uh, been traveling up with empty water bottles so far. So what I'm gonna do is fill them up. And then what I do is take this filter system here, which is the Soya Micro. I always forget the name of it. Anyway, I'll put the link in the description anyway. Fantastic bit of kit. Just means you can go up without water, and then when you find a suitable spot like this, fill her up, I can get it to keep still. And all you do is just squeeze. Soya Micro Squeeze, Soya Squeeze Micro, one of the two. What I'll do is I'll fill up both bottles, and this will be for my brew and food tonight and tomorrow. I don't think where I'm going is much water at all. Notice, by the way, that I'm not filling up from the cesspool that is Angletown. That has guaranteed Jardia in it. Because of all the people that camp round that way. One last time. So you can actually drink it straight out like that. But what I'm gonna do is with my little adapter that that's going to go into my bladder tube, push this onto the tube and fill her up with delicious mountain water. Right, I think that's me filled up. Adapter off, mouthpiece back on. Right, so I'm going to get all this kit on, water packed up and make my way up to my first potential site. Let's go. Right, 
All right. Uh, a few things that I kind of look out for when I'm trying to find a decent site for uh, to pitch my tent. And I use like a bit of a a bit of a cheesy principle: uh, earth, wind, fire, and water. Uh, so the first one, earth. I'm kind of looking for somewhere that's going to be dry, not boggy. Uh, somewhere that's pretty soft and nothing sharp that's going to potentially puncture my uh, my ground sheet, anything like that. And preferably flat-ish if possible. I mean, we are in the mountains, you know. <laughs> it's uh, finding flat places is not always possible, but it's a bonus. I think if you want a good night's sleep, it definitely helps you find to find something fairly flat. Uh, second one, wind. Uh, it, it, I think it's, it makes a massive amount of difference if you just get yourself out of the wind. Um, it can just make the difference between having a really noisy night and potentially quite cold to a nice calm and fairly warm night as well. So just finding some natural shelter like this, some rocks, uh, just can really make a big difference. Okay, so fire, there really is no fire. So I'm gonna swap out F for falling rocks. That's something I'm a little bit paranoid about actually. I, I, I do worry about rocks falling in the middle of the night. So what I always do is either find somewhere that's not got any loose rocks or at least go and have a quick check and just make sure there's nothing obvious that's going to topple over in the middle of the night. I mean, I've even in the past kind of wedged in rocks under under bigger ones just in case, you know, just to stop them from rolling off. Um, so that's F. And then the final one is water. It's not absolutely necessary, but I do like to, if possible, camp near a water supply. Um, I haven't today, but I knew there was one en route. So that's why I filled up before, because actually the nearest water supply is probably right down there, which is a good whew, 10 minutes down, 20 minutes back up. I don't fancy that. So it's nice to have a water supply near you, but not absolutely necessary. So those are things I kind of look for really. The main one, or the main two for me really are the ground and the wind. If I've got them sussed, then I'm happy. And if I get a view like this, this is a massive bonus. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is, I think this is the spot for me. It's flattish, it's definitely dry, and uh, there's no obvious spiky bits. I can't see anything. Um, few rocks there. I've got a natural windbreak here. That is gorgeous. Wow, I've got to get a shot of that in a minute. And then I'm going to get my tent up. So, uh, yeah, I'll get it up. See you in a minute. tents up. Fantastic spot. And let's have a look at the time. It's seven o'clock. So we've got about another two hours yet. Two hours, 15 until uh, sunset. But that is looking absolutely stunning over there. Wow. I think you'll agree. This is a pretty good camp spot. This is all of Estale here, Upper Estale, Borfell, Crinkle Crags. Dow Crag in the distance, Heart of Fell is kind of covered in cloud here. So the weather's really changed now actually because it was looking quite foreboding before. When I was putting the tent up, I was getting a few spots of rain and it was all moving in. But it's cleared off now and uh, it looks, maybe the next hour or so, looks like it's going to be blue sky. All right, I'm going to pull myself away from that incredible view. I 
I've taken about a thousand photographs already <laughs> of pretty much the same thing, but the light's just changing all the time. It's really soft glow now, but I just want to show you inside my humble abode. Let's go inside. Here we go. Just snag my head on the door. And here we are. Welcome to the Terra Nova Voyager 200. 200 or 2? I actually can't remember. But, uh, cracking little tent, semi, semi geodesic. Uh, probably just big enough for me, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm six foot two and I can just and so fit in it. Um, it's quite nice. Length ways. I've got a bit of space here for my kit, which is great. Sleep bag. This is my Starlight 3. Yeah, Starlight 3. It's a three season bag, which is just about right for um, Lake District in kind of spring, summer and autumn. I wouldn't want to use it in winter. I think it'd be too cold for that. So that's that. And that's that. I'll get a few more shots of that. And then I think it's probably time to get some food and, and have a brew. Already, brew time and food time. So I'm gonna have my chili con carne or carne con chili. This stuff is brilliant. Uh, they've not paid me to say this, but I just think it's delicious. It tastes like chili con carne that you'd make at home. And it's got no crap in it either, which is good. So what I'll do is I'll get that on while that's cooking. So I think it takes about 15 minutes here to, to kind of do its thing. I'll have a hot chocolate as well and just admire that view. Because that's a bit special. Always take that out as well. <laughs> Not good if you keep that in there. And I think we've got to boil. There we go. Lock it in. Get a bit of a stir. water from your hot chocolate. And you can't beat Cadbury's hot chocolate. It's pretty cool on the campsite. Overlooking England's highest mountain, isn't it? I tell you what, I will never ever take this kind of thing for granted. To be able to do this sort of thing. The sun is just about to dip down beneath there now. Okay, despite appearances on this camera, it is actually getting quite dark now. Seems like a lot of light here. Uh, but the sun is down. Let's have a look. It's 20 past nine. And there's some really gnarly looking clouds coming in over Great End. So I think I'm probably just going to get myself in the tent to get a bit of shut eye because I'd like to get up about five o'clock. Well, actually, no, about half four, four maybe. See you inside the tent. Yeah, it's a good idea. Right, I'm back in the tent. It's uh, winds picking up out there now. You can see it kind of flapping around everywhere. <laughs> And it's quite dark out there now, so it's time to go to sleep, I think. Getting on my stuff on charge, camera there. I'm going to get this on charge, my phone as well. And uh, get undressed, get into my bag. Hopefully, you won't see me again into the morning. Hopefully, there'll be no nightmares. <laughs> uh, so until then, I'll see you.
Good morning. Welcome back. Uh, as you can see, the sun is shining. It's an absolutely beautiful day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some bricky, some porridge, have another brew, and then slowly pack up. And once I've done that, I'm going to head over to Or Gap, up Borfell, and down to Three Towns, and along the band, and down into Langdale Valley, back to the car. Okay, what have we got? water in. This is the same water I got yesterday in that lovely stream. Right, what are we having? Gonna have some porridge and let's have a cup of coffee. I think we're done. We're definitely done. It's like a ball of cement. Actually, it looks like a ball of snot now. Mm. This has surely got to be the best breakfast room in the Lake District. Ah, I don't want to leave. Look at it. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't want to go, but I've got to go. So uh, let's get all this packed up and get gone. Okay, that's rubbish. <laughs> right, let's go. After our strike camp, I always like to have a, a good look around, make sure I've not left anything. Uh, not left anything that I need or any rubbish, or any signs of me being here. Apart from that slightly flattened down bit of grass here, you wouldn't even know I'd been here. And all this will spring back up again today. No pegs, no rubbish, nothing. What a marvelous camp. I definitely will be returning to this spot. Beautiful. So, I'm gonna slap on a lot of sun cream in a minute and then head over to Or Gap, which is just there actually, up to Borfell and then down. Morning. Wow. I absolutely love Borfell. Got to be up there with my favourites, purely because of that conical summit. Get a full 360 degree view right round all the valleys. And it's great for photographs. I'm actually going to dedicate a, a vlog to it. Probably come up the climbs traverse, up Great Slab, Borfell, down the Crinkles. And across there, that'd be quite a nice vlog. So I'll uh, probably do that at some point in the future. So I'm gonna head down now to Three Towns and then head towards the band and down. I'll probably update it again when I'm back down the valley, I think, yeah. That's where I took my Highland Cow picture. Okay, here we are. Back in the valley. Not far from the car park now. 
took a bit of a tumble up on the, uh, the fell side there coming down the band just a bit of a gravelly bit and went down on my knee on the gravelly bit and all the bits of stones are all stuck in there but uh, anyway never mind it's always good to come back bloodied from a walk <laughs> but that pretty much concludes the uh, wild camp so I just really hope you've liked it if you have liked it please give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please do so that'll be very much appreciated uh, and you can kind of be notified of this crazy hairy dude bombing it around the lakes falling over a lot <laughs> that's gorgeous but uh, until the next one either normal vlog or a wild camp I'll see you. Bye.